Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be further discussing the Resolution Gate um, fiasco, as well as an interview with Crytek. So, Crytek have been definitely in the crosshairs the most, with uh, Rise Son of Rome on the Xbox One being what the community perceives to be downgraded from 1080p to 900p, or to put it into perspective, 2,073,000 uh, pixels, I'm sorry, to 1.44 million. So that's quite a big drop, as you can imagine. And Crytek have continuously said this is not a downgrade. The reason we did this is to be able to fit more stuff on screen, to have better uh, rendering models, to be able to have better lighting, uh, and so on and so forth. And I actually did a comparison, to be fair, of um, the before and after. And obviously the Xbox One scaler is pretty damn good, to be fair to the system. Um, and we all know that raw resolution does of course make a large difference, but there's also a lot more to it as well. But in a recent interview, they've been discussing this even further. And specifically on the balancing issue, and that of course would be the gameplay, uh, the frame rate and the resolution and everything else that goes into making a title. Uh, he begins by saying, definitely there were some balancing issues. I mean, honestly, the truth is it doesn't matter what generation you're developing for, you always have constraints. And I think, you know, the thing we were fortunate about was we had a great partner in Microsoft in getting the hardware and kind of digging into it and having a back and forth dialogue. I think Savat released some technical reasons, Savat Yearly by the way, uh, released some technical reasons as to why we did the things we did, but I mean, when it comes down to it, every project has their crosses to bear, and you've got to figure out what you want to do and what's best way to use the technology. We were really fortunate, we had a great partner, so whatever curveballs we had, we saw them coming well before they actually hit us. We kind of joke that it's like landing a plane on a runway as you're going down and your engine is on fire and the fuselage has holes in it and stuff like that. They also added that they were very proud of the fact that they were able to blur the lines between a character in cinematics and the Marius in game because the characters are one to one which is basically meaning that if you're fighting in game we have absolutely no and we absolutely wanted to, we could zoom into Marius' face, had him read a line, and the transition is super smooth. I think before you had in these cutscenes where you would have the higher detailed character and then in-game it would look different, and you'd always be like, wait a minute, why does my guy in-game feel as good as the guy, as that guy? So definitely we've blurred the lines there. But for me, not just as a developer, but as a gamer, we're able to push more on screen. So artistically, Rise is beautiful. People seem to forget the whole tech argument. There are actual artists and craftsmen that have been making this. Some of the scenes in Rome, the architecture, the detailing is absolutely stunning. The interviewer, who, by the way, works for the official uh, Xbox magazine, uh, suggested that people are really caught up in the uh, counting pixels, they tend to neglect the little touches, such as, say, uh, clouds of dust and smoke and whatever else. And he replies, absolutely. The thing is, it's really a commitment on the art team. We have a fantastic art team. Some of the stuff, I mean, if I were to live in one of these buildings, I would feel really amazing. It's just beautiful. I think they've crossed the line from making video game art to just making really beautiful art because everything is so high res, you're pulled out of the experience. You really feel like, holy crap, this world is amazing. It's really alive, you know. Um, well, it was a fairly interesting, if somewhat short, interview. And I think the issues that people have aren't so much that there were sacrifices being made because, uh, I mean, I speak uh, on the behalf of many of my uh, regular viewers and that, you know, people aren't, well, uh, most people aren't idiots. They know that there's not this endless abundant well of infinite console power, right? Um, you're paying X amount for a set fixed piece of equipment. So that means that 
you cannot expect it to be able to keep up with a ridiculously high spec PC. That's fine. What's also fine is that, of course, developers expect to make certain sacrifices. One cannot assume that you have this infinite abundant well, and this goes, of course, for the PlayStation 4 or whatever uh, next console that Nintendo come out with, that you have this unlimited resource of memory, you have an unlimited uh, ridiculous resource of CPU power, and the GPU uh, can basically handle the creation of the universe. That just doesn't work. There are finite limits on the hardware. But, despite all of this, I think the causes for concern are pretty simple. Um, I am not doubting the quality of the Xbox One's games. That's, I think that's one issue that a lot of people have um, that I think is kind of unfair. There are a couple of issues on this. Firstly, a resolution does not make a, a good game. I, I completely agree um, that, you know, Phil Spencer and others in the Microsoft team have said that, and I agree. You know, it's like... I, I, I just don't agree that, you know, it all comes down to resolution, and that's the end of it. But, at the same time, here's where I do agree with other people. Um... The, the basic concern is that, look, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have... Let's, let's assume that they were both exactly the same hardware, just for a moment. Let's, let's just put our, let's go to a trip to Disney World, and let's assume that they were all exactly the same hardware, and the only differences were the software. So, in other words, they both went with AMD Jaguars, it just happened that they both went exactly the same direction they both had gddr5 memory and so on and so on and so the only differences between them would be the software and the apis so even so the teams would still have to figure out okay well this is microsoft's way of doing things this is sony's way of doing things and we're still going to have this you know one version may look infinitesimally a little bit better until maybe the APIs become a bit better or maybe Microsoft's or maybe Sony's uh, development kits may be a bit further behind, whatever. But eventually, you're going to get that kind of level of parity unless you get one system that has a very bloated operating system compared to the other. But the concern many people have is that you're already getting this disparity, you're already getting this massive discrepancy between the Xbox One versions and the PlayStation 4. And um, we've discussed heavily about the ES RAM, but one cannot forget other fairly obvious points, such as the raw GPU computational speed. Um, and so here's where people are coming from, I think. People look at the specifications and they, they see things such as the PS4 having double the ROPs and they see the Xbox One having significantly less, let's say, GCN cores um, and so on. And all of these things put together are kind of part and parcel of the same cause and, and uh, problem in that you automatically start assuming that okay, if the ES RAM is causing an issue now, developers may find ways to improve it, they'll get around certain issues, but what they won't be able to do is get around the large discrepancy between the GPUs, for example, or the differences in compute. However, I think the Xbox One does have a couple of uh, advantages. For example, the fact that it has you know, about 150 megahertz clock speed increase over the PS4 in CPU, that could be an advantage in certain situations. I'm not saying all situations, but in certain situations it could be good, uh, especially if the CPU is pretty tied up. Obviously, the PS4 does have those uh, very long compute queues. It can actually uh, store up to 64 instructions, which is pretty damn impressive. It's certainly considerably more, about four times so than the Xbox One, but I guess it just depends on how the developers are actually putting together the game. Um, the Xbox One does also have quite a few fixed function parts. Now we could go round in the circle, and we could certainly speak about this stuff a lot more. The bottom line, however, is there's still certain parts of the APU that is not being 
disclosed. Um, apparently, we're going to be getting more information on, I think it was the 15th um, of this month, which is November as I'm recording. And uh, that's 2013, just in case you're watching this in the, you know, the distant future, where we maybe have like flying cars or something. Um, and so we never know what's, you know, what other modifications they've made. But from what we know, of course, the Xbox One does have the discrepancy. But I think people are really focused on the 1080p, not because of, you know, the wisps of smoke and so on, but because they expected quite heavily, really, um, for titles to run at 1080p, and they would have preferred at 60 frames per second, because obviously then you start putting in some latency, uh, especially in kind of an action-y type of game. Uh, Killzone got some flack as well, to be fair, on the PlayStation 4. Um... The flak Killzone received was primarily aimed at the fact that it was running at 30 frames per second in, say, single player. Um, but, of course, once again, just like the Microsoft uh, team, the developers are kind of learning on the fly. In other words, if they were to have know what they know now, um, at this point, let's say, and then they could just redo everything. You know, they could go in a, you know, a DeLorean and go back in time and then restart the whole project all over again, they probably would have better results. I'm not necessarily saying they wouldn't make similar sacrifices. I'm not saying that like, one title may not be seven to, uh, may be running as uh, 720p now, and if they were to do this, it would be running in 1080, because they might have improved other things. They might have decided, you know what, we're going to target a higher frame rate, or you know what we're going to do, we're going to go with better texture quality, or we're going to go with multi-sampler, multi-sample anti-aliasing, MSAA, or, or um, you know, uh, FXAA, or something like that, uh, a different form of anti-aliasing, or maybe we're going to go with more um, improvements on the lighting, or maybe higher definition textures, or whatever, who the heck knows, maybe uh, more levels of detail, so let's say they've got three uh, levels of detail on a model, let's just use uh, simple numbers, let's say they have a 10,000 polygon model, a 5,000 and a 2,500 even though they're pretty low, but let's just use that example. They might also uh, have put in another one, like they might have a 10,000, a 7,500, a 5,000, uh, like a, a 3,500 and a 2,500 or whatever. It's very hard to know, but I'm just throwing out uh, silly examples. Um, there's also other things, of course, like they'd have maybe been able to optimize the titles better. Um, obviously, certain games like Call of Duty Ghosts, um, I mean, the developers were speaking quite a lot on um, Infinity Ward on Call of Duty Ghosts, and the, the Xbox One version was running 720p, and of course they, you know, they were very embarrassed in a recent interview in this regard, and... Um, when they were being asked which version, you know, what system, in your opinion, is more powerful, they were decidedly awkward. So obviously they had information that they were alluding to the fact that the PlayStation 4 ver uh, was considerably more powerful, but they were stopping short of saying it because of uh, constraints. But, you, you know, then you actually hear that the PlayStation 4 version has its own share of issues, um, including frame rate problems, um, 1080p, you know, ran on the PlayStation 4, but it, they were, Infinity Ward was saying, you know, 60 frames per second is the target, and that's what we want to shoot for, and some reports were saying that it was dipping significantly, the Xbox One version is exactly the same on 720p, so I don't necessarily know if I can actually accept some of what he was saying. Obviously, Mark Rubin uh, was certainly giving some information. I'm not saying he was lying through the whole thing, but obviously there were some issues with optimization. I would uh, say that, to be fair, the problem with Call of Duty is that it was running on everything. I mean, I don't know how many platforms it was, like five they were trying to uh, run it on. And that's just not indicative of being able to get the most out of any platform. You can try. I mean, you could try your best. I mean, by all means, try, because that's obviously the aim of the game. But the bottom line is, um, despite the fact that they had a significant budget, 
you've still got only a certain amount of time. You've only got a certain amount of time to optimize the PC version. I mean, there were really big problems with it. I don't know if you guys play on Steam or whatever. If you're console gamers, you may not know this, but on Steam, which of course is basically a platform where you can distribute, uh, buy games and whatever on the PC, you've got the ability to have like an overlay with like your friends list. So you can say, oh, Bob and Jane's online, so I can invite them to a game. And there were some issues at the launch where if you actually had your friends list enabled online, um, it would actually cause like jerking in the background of the uh, menus and some latency there on the PC. Um, you had issues where ridiculously powerful graphics cards like the, you know, Titan would be struggling with it and it wouldn't run um, in certain configurations and it had a ridiculously high installation. Um, I think it was like 50 gigs or so. I don't usually take 100% notice, but it was about 50 gigs, which is ludicrous when you consider that the texture quality is not that great. Um, and my opinion, and certainly from the the sounds of people's uh, comments on various forums, and you all know who you are if you're members of those communities, you seem to be probably agreeing with me on that point. But, as I said, this is still pretty early. Um, I agree, I don't necessarily agree that developers should get flack for decisions, though, uh, in regarding, say, the resolution of... Um, a title. Obviously, I don't think uh, developers deserve a huge amount of flack for making a decision. What you've got to remember, and they can't exactly admit this, but when you have changing, uh, let's go with goals, because okay, they might have a specific set of hardware that was maybe given to them, depending on how early they were involved in the project, but um, in terms of the next generation. But they certainly don't know all the memory allocation, they don't know the final clock speeds, and so on and so forth. So they have to kind of just go with it. And even if they were to know that, and they don't for the most part, because Microsoft and Sony don't know those, but you've got things such as the tools are being developed as you are literally working on them. You are literally forging a new ground. This is not a situation where everything's been created for you. You are quite literally programming and developing tools, engines, and or adapting, you know, thousands or even millions of lines of code in some cases and then checking them. And don't forget, these are x86 um, processors as well. So if you're not too familiar with those, it makes it even more interesting to code for. On the other hand, I do agree that for the Xbox One, the fact that the resolution has slipped a bit is a cause for concern, especially when you consider that the graphics on the next generation of games, I'm talking like, for example, uh, the second wave, the third and the fourth, it's going to keep improving. Um, you know, we're going to see better games, we're going to see better graphics, but the bottom line is we just don't know how, if the um, if the two vehicles, if you will, the Xbox One bandwagon, the PlayStation 4 bandwagon are going to continue at roughly the same distance as they are from the other in terms of the disparity in the, the graphics to the resolution, or if it's going to start to diminish, or maybe even start increasing. I have one rumour um, one leaked rumor, so you can put as much uh, stock into it as you desire, and that's from Seaboat, who of course is a infamous um, MS leaker slash uh, Telltale slash whatever you want to call him or her. In fact, some people believe it's a group of people, but whatever. One theory that they put out is that you're going to start seeing the developers get a much closer level of parity between the versions. In other words, the PS4 is going to look much like the Xbox One. And then what's going to happen is that it's going to start to widen again. And the reason behind this is because the ES RAM is just not going to be able to feed everything as well as compute and everything's not going to be able to feed uh, so it holds in there and it's just going to become a bit of a mess. Although, obviously, he can or she, we don't know which, just cannot predict the future. We don't really know what APIs, what new uh, tools are going to be available. Regardless, 
I think for many people, they are going to look at this and they're going to say 720p for the next generation, really, um, for the first wave of games, that's not really what we want to see. And I can kind of agree with them in some respects, but at the same time, I don't know if I agree with Rise. That's not to say that Rise looks like my type of game. There are other titles in the Xbox One, however, that I must say do look really cool. Like, for example, Killer Instinct is looking really awesome. But anyway, uh, it's been a bit of a ranty kind of uh, opinions video. So kind of straight off the topic a little bit, but there you have it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.